Axe Warrior. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to some more Conqueror's Blade. My name is Sir Medieval, and today we're going to be talking about some first impressions of for the game's early access head start. We're a couple days in so far, and it has been pretty interesting. Uh, the game itself has been running better than expected. However, there is some issues with the server that definitely need to be looked at. There's also issues with uh, the gameplay itself, the mechanics and things like that, like the territory war, for instance. We did have our first territory war yesterday, which was pretty good to say the least, but um, there was an issue with the food. It actually ran out in the main city, which meant that there were neutral cities that you can go to as well to retrieve food. But basically that means that once you run out of food, that you essentially have to go to one of these neutral cities or you basically will starve and really not have anywhere else to obtain food. So that was a bit of a problem because for people that didn't own territory or didn't get territory during, that meant that they actually had to go all the way to an independent city to try and get their food. So it made taking territory a little bit of a pain and certain fights as well. Um, other than that though, in terms of the optimization, it does run decent to a part, but we still have an issue where if there's more games going on than just a few, the server will kind of start to have massive delays, about 12, 15 seconds in between actions, things like that. It doesn't happen as often now as it did yesterday and the day before, but of course we are approaching the free to play launch. So hopefully that gets looked at and kind of concerning because it hasn't been looked at already to kind of get fixed up. but. Everybody's still having fun regardless. For the actual um, classes themselves, everything does feel pretty seamless uh, when it is working. The only thing, of course, is uh, balance-wise, people are kind of concerned with some. Now that uh, Dual Blades has been actually nerfed pretty hard-ish on their ult, at least. Not their ult, sorry, but their choke. They had their choke taken out, but rest assured, that doesn't make the class completely useless in fights. There's still situations where it can be decent but uh, to be honest it does feel as if um, far few in between sometimes in the general fight people are starting to also get their ultimates dual daggers included and of course that was a point in time where a lot of people figured they would start to get good again which they are they actually are now being built more around the ultimate so that is actually helping them out a lot now oh wow sweet that feels like a good treb right there. I don't have my horse anymore, that's right. But uh, enough about that for the most part. The open world itself is um, is doing pretty good. They actually have a new kind of mechanic where you can actually gra grab treasure from the open world. It does pop up in random places for each person. And you can actually get things like schematics and even skill books out of them for your ultimate skill. So that has been something that um, I've actually made use of as well. Earlier this morning, I actually ended up getting my ultimate skill from this method. So, um, so far they have been working pretty well. Bandit camps are also still a thing as well as um, rebels and the captains do roam around the map, though sometimes they will uh, not have any spawning. If the server's kind of acting up, that tends to happen as well. But for the most part, it has been pretty good. In the territory war yesterday, luckily we didn't have any cases or too many cases that we heard of where the cities and the territory itself was bugging out when you tried to capture it. That was a thing in previous betas that was a really, really detrimental issue uh, for trying to do anything related to the territory where it made things almost impossible sometimes when you'd have like almost every single one of your targets um, glitching out to where you could not initiate the fight. Okay. Well, this is hell in a handbasket. Let me heal. Luckily, got my gunners going ham and firing into the back line. It looks like somebody's up top here. Who is this? Ah. Ah, beam. Gonna say it's so close. Paul opens the gate. Oh crap. Oh god, we're starting to get laid into by these guys. I was wondering why they sallied out. 
That must have been it. Oh, there goes my musket. In terms of leveling, though, um, even though we do uh, keep going past level 60, you only get your attribute points up to 60. So what that means is that's kind of where the soft cap ends. And then past that point, you'll be able to continue getting more troops and things like that. But in terms of the actual um, progression side of things on attributes, that no longer happens. Aya. Oh, cool. Also, the only thing that would really differentiate you from another person when it comes to going past level 60 is going to be the units, of course, as well as the gear. Um, the only thing there is that we all get capped out at level 30, level 40 and level 50 gear isn't available right now. Um, the only way that we really have access to it is by the territory system, at least on the previous test. but. It's actually not showing up in the recipe maker right now. So more than likely, we might get capped out at 30 gear for a little bit here until 40 gear arrives. And then that might be linked towards the territory unless they're planning on making a new system for that. Um, once that does happen, though, that'll be where you'll start to see major differences in terms of balance. And it will also be down to the gear itself when that does come around. So keep an eye out for that, of course. And Right now, if you're worried about being a free-to-play player or coming in after it officially launches, don't worry about that. You still have time to catch up. Uh, again, if you can, definitely get into a guild because, like I said, that's what the system itself is going to be based off of for the most part. So you need to make sure that uh, if you're not in a guild that you get into one if you're planning on being a competitive player. And it looks like we got it. Go, 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 go. I he was actually going to jump through that. This is the vault system as well, which is a pretty neat system too. Um, it allows you to actually use keys that you can get in various different ways, including inside the game itself through the weekly quests as well as through the cash shop too. And you can actually use those to open that. So far, we haven't really got really good rewards at all. We've basically just got crafty materials and like 2,000 silver per vault we open. But after level 60, now I kind of wish that I wait that I waited until I got to that level to start using them because next time we might get some much, much better rewards. But we'll have to see, though, on that count. In terms of the cash shop, uh, they did actually balance it out really well, I will say, you know, despite the server issues and um, the issues that people are having with the balance right now and things like that. Um, there is actually a pretty decent cash shop that we have here. Right now, of course, the unit card and the hero cards for the bonus XP, that is a very useful thing to have. But um, everybody is pretty much able to buy that pretty easily because of the fact that it's actually very cheap. Those are about 50 cents per if you kind of wind them down and you can buy those only two times a day. And that will bring people like ahead of you for sure, including the premium. But it's not set in stone to, you know, completely keep you out of the game forever. Uh, you, we all get capped out at a certain point unit wise even that will all get capped out at a certain point though that would be far down the line of course we still have a lot of progression to go through from the unit trees this is also the expansion permits which allows you to hold increase the number of units you can own not the amount of units you can bring into a battle but just the ones that you own so when you get new troops this will prevent you from having to disband certain troops to put in new ones the horse trough is one that allows you to increase the capacity of your stables by one uh, the personal history if you want to reset your attribute points though don't recommend doing this right now because people are actually getting issues where uh, they're actually having their stats that they got in character creation get reset so i wouldn't try that right now this is just for the message board for the fife and then this is all a bunch of uh, basically cosmetic stuff that we have here for your hero this is for your horse and they also have the unit attire as well which i have been using um, both of these I like them very much actually this one's for cavalry mainly but you can use it on infantry as well and then um, pretty much that's it for the consumables heroes and the horses the only thing that is really um, really really super useful is of course the premium account which allows you to get that bonus XP for heroes units bronze coins and honor as well as get more uh, keys from the weekly quests so you'll be able to get a decent amount just from the top row here um, throughout these ones and when you get to the end but the weekly gives you extra in terms of the territory as well um that actually was pretty good so far we got 
um, a couple houses that were able to grab territory yesterday and this is on the North American server I heard some things about EU and how things are going over there but um, on the North American server each house was about able to get about two to three fifes minimum um, the one that we had got about five and a couple a few others got five total houses that got territory was about I'd say 10 to 12 there wasn't very many that were able to have enough prestige to actually claim territory because the way that the house system works is that you absolutely have to have um, enough prestige to declare on a territory and you can only declare on villages that can hold that have resources next to them at level guild two guild level two and then on level three that's what, when you can actually take cities so there were only a handful a very very base handful of cities taken yesterday and that prestige is kind of what balances it out so that you know these big crazy guilds won't be able to hold a bunch of different territory at once and if it does happen of course they might not be able to defend everywhere at once giving you the opportunity to have a fighting chance here we go Ah, so close yet so far. And yeah, once the server starts acting up and uh, things like that, we will start getting some lag here and there. I'd say the only thing that really could be very detrimental to the game itself, at least on the NA side of things, is the server lag or the server issues and also the... Uh, oh, hi, June. Oh, God, hi. And also um, the balance itself, if they're kind of unable to get a grip on it, that might hurt the game a little. Like, if it, if it turns into a case where... They're just balancing every class to kind of be the same and do the same amount of damage and be able to kill the same amount of people. Uh, that actually is going to make it to where uh, it might be a little bit of a boring kind of experience. If it's if it's at a point where um, skill wise, if everyone's balanced, everybody has an equal chance of killing everyone. That would be great. It's just I don't believe that's ever possible in games. I think uh, you know games like World of Warcraft have definitely tried that and did not end up getting to a really good point in PvP from what I've heard. So I don't know if it would turn into that, but hopefully, no matter what, we get some good balance here. I definitely think that the bow classes need to be looked at. That I do definitely agree with. They definitely need to buff. Um, also, the Nodachi definitely seems like it needs some love too. And um, maybe the Glaive and uh, Polearm as well, from what I can see. I don't believe that our Short Sword class should be doing you know as much damage as it is quite now. Um, I believe that it should probably be nerfed a little bit although versus troops it is actually uh very bad very bad at killing units versus troops so i will say that on the hero side of things it can definitely yes kill i'm trying to shoot through that hole right there and be awesome it can definitely kill heroes pretty well but units um not so much all the time also, once it goes free to play on the 4th, um, there will be a lot of people joining in. Hopefully, the free to play players, once they come in, the population may go up to about uh, five, 6,000. It'd be really nice. If that doesn't happen, I'm worried it could stop. Uh, and I'm talking on Steam, by the way, not the actual Mitocom launcher, which most players do actually just use the Mitocom launcher, which is great. Um, but hopefully, you know, we get some, get some more people joining on the actual. Um, Steam client too. We'll have to see what happens there though. Oh no. But with that folks, that is going to be all for today in terms of the first impression. So far it's been a pretty interesting experience, but we'll have to see what it does turn into. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching though. Hopefully you have some fun in game. We'll have to see where the game goes in terms of progression and what happens with the reviews and things like that. But in the meantime, good luck out there. And I'll see you next time. Later.